Welcome back everyone to the Pika Show. On today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at the Army Assault minigame within War and Order. As I mentioned in a previous video, I absolutely love the minigames in uh, War and Order. They're really entertaining, can be played over and over again, as well as uh, a great way to kill some time in the game. This particular video, I'm going to be reviewing one of the toughest chapter that I encountered while trying to complete the nightmare mode. The chapter number is 20. The challenge with this chapter is that enemy actually starts off with three castles and one tower. So instantly right off the bat, they have a huge advantage when it comes to their troop counts and the production on the troop. Another challenge with it is, if you want to go out and take over the castles that are outside and away from your little area on the bottom, you have to go through the towers, which forces you to uh, sacrifice some troops and makes it very difficult to try to actually even gain the upper hand in this particular level. Doing some trial and error, I did notice that the AI in this particular minigame is a little bit flawed and uh, I figured out a way to kind of exploit that weakness in the AI to be able to complete this challenge. One of the first things that we kind of go about doing as soon as the level starts is sending every single troop that you have over into the tower or the attack tower that the enemy owns right next to your castle. Once you have all your troops in there and they've taken over that castle and you own it, turn that into a regular castle to be able to produce troops and then send all the remaining troops up to take over the regular castle that's there which is a neutral castle towards the middle. Once you have control of that neutral castle, you turn that into a tower. And I know you're losing, you know, 30 troops anytime you change the tower type or the castle type, but here's why it's totally worth it. One of the things that the AI has a little weakness on, it seems that the AI always goes after the neutral castles first before trying or attempting to attack your own castle. So if you leave a neutral castle behind the lines of the towers or the attack towers that you're creating, what happens is that as enemy AI is sending the troops over in waves to trying to take over that neutral castle, it's losing a lot of the troops that it's actually producing. Just going through that tower area because you have two towers that are constantly attacking those troops. And while they're busy trying to attack and take over that neutral castle, you can sneak in, take over the other neutral that's all the way at the bottom in the corner and upgrade all of your actual regular castles that produce troops. So that way you can get your troop production high enough to be able to withstand and actually contest the enemy's waves coming at you. It does get to a point as you play along where the waves are getting bigger and you will have to eventually take over that neutral castle. But the beauty of it is, is that by the time that happens, you've already established a really good base around it. Now, the other thing that I go about doing in here is turning the armory tower, which gives you bonus to your troops, also into an attack tower. And the reason why I do that is so that way, even if by some chance the enemy actually ends up taking over that specific tower, it doesn't get any actual stat boost for the armies that it's sending at you. And it makes it a much more even fight to be able to fight that. Once I have that perimeter established of those attack towers, then I go about actually collecting and amassing troops by just shuffling them around to wherever the enemy is trying to attack. So wherever AI sends troops to attack, I load up that castle, let AI's troops die while I'm building even more troops. And I'm slowly cutting down the total amount of troops that the AI has as the game kind of progresses on. Once I feel like I have enough troops sitting there to be able to actually do one massive wave against one of the AI's castles, I send that wave over to the AI's castle and take it over. Now, as you may see, currently I'm only owning four castles. So as soon as I take over one of the enemy's castle that's owned by AI, I automatically have a upper hand on the number of troops being produced for me because the, the AI actually has only 
five castles. As soon as I take one away, now the AI's got four castles, I've got five, and generally ends up where I actually have a lot more troops left over than the AI does by the time I take that castle over. So now the AI's low on troops, cannot produce the troops as fast as I can, and that's when the real assault begins from my end. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my troops that I've been amassing in my attack towers, and I'm gonna take them 100% and send massive two waves at that castle that's right near me. While they're trying to take that neutral castle away, I took their castle that produces troops away from the waves that I sent over, and now they're not able to produce as many troops, and now I have the upper hand when it comes to troops. Now, it does happen, as you just saw, that sometimes, you know, the enemy actually ends up taking one of your towers if you're not quick enough, or if you're not able to shuffle your troops around quick enough. But that is exactly why I had turned that armory into an attack tower. It didn't get any stat boost from owning that particular castle. Now, once I have the upper hand on the troop production, I kind of start amassing the troops again and start building up for big waves. And once I feel like I have enough troops to be able to overpower the AI with my troop count, that's when I began the actual assault and try to wipe out the AI. Again, this particular strategy technically can be applied to any of the levels that are there because the AI by default has a tendency to go after neutral castles before it will try to touch your castle. In most scenarios, you should be able to utilize this strategy and be able to win every single level there is in Army Assault. Once again, thank you very much for joining us. I hope you liked the little uh, tutorial on how to beat some of the difficult levels in Army Assault. Don't forget, like and subscribe, and do let us know if there is something specific that you'll like to see on this channel.